on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guessman, coming to you on a January 21st on the Thursday uh, live show going on for you right now. A lot to get to tonight. MLS draft. I mean, not that we need to talk about it, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, LA Galaxy some, making some young signings, added those guys to the roster. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, some history, some LA Galaxy history. We'll probably start off with some corrections and retractions just to really kick things off nice. Uh, so a bunch to get to before we get out of this in order to help me do all that. The man, the myth, the legend. It's Eric, the Portuguese hammer Vieira. Eric, how's it going, buddy? It's, it's going well. I have, uh, I have my tea with me. I'm ready for... A nice, uh, soothing evening to talk LA Galaxy. Uh, I think our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to try to not make an error for the next 60 minutes. Because I think last week uh, was a rough week. We had we had a few uh, <laughs> retractions, like you mentioned, that we need to go back and fix. So the goal is to try to be as accurate as possible today. I I will I will say that one <laughs> of them is not still. one of them is not my fault. Okay, one of them is not my fault. So that's that's all I I will I will start to talk. But let's. Listen, there's a ton of stuff to get to. I, I know you can vouch for people. I have like three pages of notes for tonight um, because <laughs> it's it gets, yeah, it gets a little in the weeds tonight. Let's let's be honest. Um, so what we have, let's start corrections and retractions. Let's start with the biggest one that I screwed up on. Um, basically, the new home in a way is not true. I said last week that there would be a new home and a new away. Uh, there's just a new away. The new home is scheduled for 2022. So I got that wrong, Eric. Um, one of the things that we believe is the case, however, is all the stuff we said about that home jersey that was coming out in 2021 is probably true of the 2022 yeah. jersey. So uh, whenever you go back and listen to that show and you you hear how uh, what a moron I was and, and what I said, um, then I was wrong. I was wrong on that, and I apologize for that. We try to keep it keep it real. But uh, I mostly blame Eric when if yeah. we're really if we're really getting down to this. It, it was probably your fault. I think because it was it was Jersey talk that you know I get l- lumped in as the source because I'm the Jersey guy, so uh, you know I'll, I'll take the blame for it. But like you said, it doesn't mean that the rumors about what that kit is going to look like aren't true. It's just you know going to be delayed a year. If you, uh, I think uh, Pablo Maurer from uh, the Athletic put out a piece on how long the jerseys take, and it's like a you know three four year process that they get ahead. Uh, before those jerseys actually come out, so it's still coming, just a year behind. So enjoy that silver sash for one more year. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> um, so yeah, so so that's in there. Um, what we have a, a, as well is um, was another correction. Now this one, like I said, is not my fault. Uh, the LA Galaxy put out a press release about Jonathan Bond. We talked about Jonathan Bond, the goalkeeper. We talked about him being six foot five and 150 pounds and making fun of the way that he may blow away in a stiff breeze. We made all those jokes. We had fun with it. Um, I knew there was something fishy with it. I should have double checked it. The press release says 150 pounds. I would like to point out it's one five zero. Okay. So I got that part, right? I read it from the press release, that whole thing. Uh, I was corrected and told uh, that he weighs 190 pounds. Now, the way I was corrected is possibly the best way to be corrected. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> which is, I got a message from Mr. Jonathan Bond, who said that he listened to the podcast and that he's pretty sure he weighs 190 pounds and not 150 pounds. 
Uh, my response was, I'm glad we were worried about you blowing away. And he said, <laughs> he said, no, not to worry uh, that, that he has that. So, so Jonathan Bond, who is still in the, in the UK right now, he's in England. Um, and we're expecting that he will be on his way to LA in this general direction, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, either this next week or, or, or the week after. Um, I don't know that there's some huge hurry to get him out here. It doesn't seem like maybe the season's going to start on time. That's still me. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, that was, that was Jonathan Bond. He weighs yeah. 190 pounds, pounds and not Which, 150 pounds. Yes. I, I, I know we're not afraid to, to, pat ourselves on the back. So I'll, I'm going to take this opportunity to pat myself on the back. When you brought that up, I said, as a student of Instagram, I wasn't worried about it because his body type, he, he looked the part. He didn't look frail or like he was weak. So it didn't worry me. Even if he was 150, he didn't look it. It, it didn't seem like it would affect him. So I'd like to pat myself on the back that it wasn't concerning uh, from looking at him, even though the, the press release was, uh, you know, uh, a little bit deceiving, but it, it all works out. We've got a, a nice, a nice beefy keeper back there. Yeah. And, and listen, it's easy to sort of say, Hey, um, you know, you just miss that. Uh, if you're the galaxy, that's an easy one to sort of look over yeah. after you get the whole press release, right? And the whole deal. So not a big deal. Uh, and if you're going to get anything wrong, like getting somebody's weight wrong is probably one of those things. Like, listen, yeah. I feel bad about last week and I feel bad about the people who got all excited about the jerseys and I took a bunch of ribbing and I certainly did. But if I'm going to be wrong about something, being wrong about a jersey is like one yeah. of those things where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'll get it right next time. The whole deal. But like, or, or Jonathan Bond's weight. It's a better story that I got it wrong, quite honestly, than it is it, that I would have got it right. You're, right. you're absolutely right. Because, you know, then we don't have the interact. You don't have the interaction. You don't have, you know, we don't have the first uh, seven minutes of content here to fill. Right. So, yeah, it all, it all worked out for the better. It, it did. Uh, I will say that Jonathan Bond has uh, has told me that once he gets in and gets settled that he will come on the show. So we'll get him and, and do that and work with the Galaxy to get him on the show. Seems like a super nice guy. I, you know, I've had all of two interactions with him on, on over <laughs> online message. Who knows? It's probably somebody catfishing me, Hammer. You know, that, that could be true, right? Possible. Yeah. Is Jonathan Bond even his real name? And who knows? It's Bond, Jonathan Bond. <laughs> um, so... You know, you, you, you look at those things that, that that's we just had some fun with it. So anyway, uh, the last correction that I would like to make, um, I know I had two. I need to add a third one is my haircut. Um, my haircut probably needs a, a correction. Um, this is what happens whenever you tell your wife that you're sick of your long hair and just buzz it. And she goes, no, 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 don't do that. Don't don't do it. Just just, you know, go ahead and just I'll cut it. It'll be fine. And I'm like, no, no, no I'm sick of this. Just cut it. And then she cut it off. And I go, you know, that was probably a little bit too short. So. Anyway, it's fine. I don't care. I feel lighter. Yeah. I'm more streamlined. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, we we're we we're talking off air how I, I kind of had that feeling like I wanted to get rid of all of it. And I, you know, my wife told me, no, that's not happening. Uh, you know, we, you know, and I, I being a, a good husband, I'm like, you know what, you know, maybe you're right. But I think, I think you missed an opportunity though. I think you can go f full bald, go no. zero. I mean, and I, I think you'd be, you'd be an intimidating, you know, go for the yell Van Dam look. I could see it working. You know, that's your problem. You didn't commit all the way. I, I, I will say this, that uh, if you just give it maybe another 10 years, I think we'll be on that. It feels like we're Naturally. going on that track anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, if ever, if you're not watching on YouTube, uh, then I have a full head of hair and I'm just still Perfect. amazing looking um, after <laughs> all this time in quarantine and not working out, not rowing and doing all that fun stuff. Uh, the, the, uh, the Peloton that's behind me um, is starting to develop a layer of dust, which I will try to um, undust here in, in recent days and actually get doing it. So, all Fair right. Enough. He'll go move on. Um, one more thing about my hair. Whenever it was real windy over the last couple of days and I wept, went outside, the hair like wisped between my hair and it kind of tickled. I just thought that was fun. So that was just, that's just fun another times. side note. Yeah, good times. Let's get to your LA Galaxy history. An important day today. A very important day today. Uh, in Galaxy history and knowing your Galaxy history. And if you don't follow at Galaxy history on Twitter, what are you doing with your life? Uh, I, I know about this, but it's nice to be reminded of these things on a regular basis. Eric, you follow galaxy history. I was going to say, not just on Twitter, on Instagram as well. He's, you know, he posts a lot of videos, same videos, basically the same content. So it's a d double dip. It, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, you, you gotta go look at it. Uh, anyway, on this day in 2001, the LA galaxy beat a CD Olympia, a Honduran team three to two to lift the CONCACAF champions cup. Uh, Ezra Hedrickson bagged a brace with Kobe Jones scoring the other at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, also known in, in 2020, 2021 terms as the heart of the city. Um, if you really wanted to, to, to know that. So that was the first time, um, 
only DC United in the LA Galaxy have won the regional championship. And this is the regional championship, Eric. This is the trophy that determines, um, you know, who was, quote unquote, the best team in CONCACAF. The formatting on this was a little strange, or, or at least it's different than what it has been since it's gone to the CONCACAF Champions League, which is what it is now. Champions League is more akin to, um, you know, the the UEFA Champions League, right? Yeah. The, the actual it's, Champions League. Yeah, and I think when you think about how it was run back then, it was more of an af- afterthought. It's like, let's take the winners, let's th- throw them together and get th- knock out these games as quickly as possible. Uh, I think, you know, you saw the model of how uh, the UEFA Champions League has basically become, you know, it, its own Super League. And I think right. CONCACAF Champions League saw that and tried to model it after that. But back in the day, it was a little bit different. It was a, you mentioned it's almost, it was actually similar to how the CCL was run this year. Yeah. Where you know, just all the games in a short period of time and then uh, whoever comes out on top of the Battle Royale gets, gets to go to the Club World Cup. Yeah, and, and that was the big deal. Uh, Galaxy win 3-2 and they qualified for the second ever Club World Cup. Uh, in 2000, FIFA put together the Club World Cup, which is like the World Cup, only for club teams uh, instead of national teams. Uh, they put it together, Eric, and this was going to be the second version of it after the 2000 uh, one. The The only thing is, this is this is craziness. Um, let's tell you a little bit about it first. So so the first Club, club World Cup was played in 2000. Um, then in 2001, they were going to have the second one. Uh, they had teams from Spain. They had uh, Deportivo La Coruna. Uh, they had Real Madrid, they had Galatasaray, they had Boca Juniors, um, they had the Galaxy, Olympia, uh, Hearts of Oak, Al Halal, uh, a Japanese team that I'm sure I will screw up, which is uh, Jubilo Owata. Uh, that sounds that sounds fun. I was gonna uh, say I'm not I'm not even gonna try to correct you. I'm gonna let you gonna hang, let you hang on yourself with that rope there. And then and then the Wallong Wolves as well. I mean, so you had a lot of teams from around the world, and this was it. And the Galaxy were drawn in a group. That included Real Madrid. Uh, group yeah. C of this group was Hearts of Oak, the Japanese team, the the Jubilo Jubilo Owata. I'm gonna keep trying it. I just yeah. I feel like I can get it if I can start <laughs> stringing it together, but but uh, it's still eluding me as of right now. What an um, exercise! Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll keep working on it. Uh, the Galaxy and Real Madrid. Here's the problem with the 2001 Club World Cup, Eric. It never happened. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it got canceled. Uh, basically, what happened is that the marketing arm of FIFA went bankrupt. They ran out of money, <laughs> which is crazy to think of now whenever you think of <laughs> FIFA and, and having never, billions and billions FIFA, of dollars. Yeah, FIFA running out of money. Th- those are two things that don't seem to go hand in hand. Yeah, it was uh, it, it, again. So it was really interesting to, to see that. So so the LA Galaxy qualified for the Club World Cup and then never got to go. It was going to be held in Spain. They were playing some like a couple of the stadiums were in Madrid. There were some there were two other stadiums around as well. Um, you could have had the LA Galaxy playing Real Madrid, you know, at the at the Bernabeu. And and that, well, I mean, come on. How could yeah. you? And in and, and 2001 also, that's Luis Figo. That's Zidane. That's Roberto Carlos. That's, you know, early Galacticos. Uh, Real Madrid. So, you know, just to think, you know, Kobe Jones, Ezra Hendrickson, Greg Vanny, to see those guys go, you know, see Fuego, see them go uh, and stack up against Real Madrid. What a memory that would have been. How cool that would be. Uh, something to look back on, <laughs> even if the score may not have uh, gone the Galaxy's way. But also, you never know. In, the, in those tournaments, sometimes wacky things happen. But, uh, you know, it is unfortunate that that never went through. Uh, still a good accomplishment. But yeah, what, what could have been? And still, um, the the interesting part about this is in this particular version of the Club World Cup, CONCACAF got two spots as well. So the runner up as well, uh, Olympia, who finished second, got to go to the Club World Cup and they were in this. And if you think about that and what that would have done in the CCL with a bunch of MLS teams, if there ever would have been runner ups, you could have had, you know, Toronto and RSL uh, go to the Club World Cup if they were runner ups. But no, you got to win it, which is better anyway. It's like it's a it's a champions cup. True champions. Yeah, that's how it should be. You need more UEFA teams in there and less CONCACAF teams. Let's be honest, right? I mean, that's that's fine. That's a, that's a thing. So anyway, uh, that is the the history of the LA Galaxy that 20 years ago, the LA Galaxy. Uh, so every time somebody says, oh, well, nobody's ever won, you know, the, the, the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, technically true. Um, no MLS team has ever won the CONCACAF Champions League. But two teams, LA Galaxy and DC United, have won the CONCACAF Champions Cup as the overall champion of the region. Um, so there's a reason that that cup exists in the LA galaxy trophy cabinet. And so a lot of times MLS has, uh, has some, some memory issues whenever it comes to that and, and <laughs> what teams have done well, uh, in that, in that competition. So I don't yeah, know, j- just fun. 
one one of the comparisons that I always think of, and this happens every year, uh, when the Galaxy obviously are never mentioned, and that is people always bring up the Premier League and how, uh, you know, Manchester United are the most Premier League winning titles, but you know, in Liverpool, if you went by that metric, they're only one time Premier League winners, and no one ever considers Liverpool a one time champion you know if you think before the premier league was established in the 90s they won you know championships and european super cups before the uefa champions league so those still count real madrid still you know has a history of winning those european cups so uh you, you still count those and and the argument of smaller league you know not playing what are you supposed to do you, you're, you're only supposed to win the competitions that are in front of you that's what the galaxy did still something to be proud of the trophies in the trophy case uh, you know, and, and it's something that uh, the club history should be proud of. It is. And uh, if you ever get a chance to walk down in the tunnel and see that trophy, you should do it. Um, that's always fun, uh, fun to see all that stuff. Uh, let's get to the just amazing, exciting thing that happened today. MLS Cup Super Draft, uh, MLS Super Draft, I should say, not MLS Cup. That would be fun if you could just draft players who won MLS Cups. We should try that sometime. Um, so you had the MLS Super Draft. <sighs> On Monday, we gave this an intro, Eric, that wasn't very long and wasn't very exciting. And I think it lived up to that billing today. I mean, I know <laughs> I know MLS tried to put on a good show, as they always do. Um, by the way, only televising, in quotation marks. Uh, on, by the way, it's better that it's on the web. I don't need it to be on ESPN or anything. like. It, the web is fine. It's the appropriate place for the MLS Super Draft. Um, but the MLS Super Draft went out. Uh, they did all three rounds today. Only one of those was quote unquote televised. Uh, and the LA Galaxy had one pick within that televised span. Overall, the LA Galaxy had three picks. They had the 16th overall first round pick. They had the 35th overall uh, pick in the second round. And they had the 62nd overall uh, pick in the third round. So, I mean, Eric, going into this, uh, what were your expectations for the LA Galaxy? Very low. Uh, it's funny. Since I've been on the show, I think my I always mark my uh, kind of my my anniversary with COG was first coming on and talking about uh, you know one of the earlier super drafts and uh, and, and it was the the draft where they had the second pick and doing research and going into it. Who are they going to pick? What's the impact they're going to have on the team? And just in the last uh, you know three or four years, the, the none of those picks have really panned out to be hardcore contributors to the team. So uh, I think last week when we talked about the draft being meaningless, it, maybe we were a little bit harsh. It's not completely meaningless. There are clubs that pick up players who do end up playing integral parts in their club, but it's just not something that the Galaxy has it's something that's worked for them in recent years. So uh, that's where, you know, you didn't want to put your full heart into it. You know, we're going to talk about some of the uh, Academy signings and G2 signings that got called up. That to me is a little bit more exciting and a little bit more the route that I think the fan base and the club should be going uh, is kind of building from your homegrown, from your Academy and developing those players and bringing them up the super draft. Uh, you know, I think it's better days are behind us. It does. So all that to say, as I as I bash it and throw it into the ground, it is exciting. You get new blood, get people who are excited. You know, they they had some playing time in college, and people who probably want to prove themselves and and want to get a, a first team contract. Uh, you know, with the LA Galaxy, one of the best clubs uh, in the league. Well, most the, histories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was gonna no. I mean, it, it is, and and I think you 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 caveated it correctly if you if you look at a player i was trying to think of like the last player who actually made a difference coming from the draft and in my mind i go to tommy meyer in 2012 he was a center back he played on an mls cup winning team he was there that may have been the last time in my memory at least like without going back and looking at every single player Tommy yeah. Meyer like pops out in 2012. And when you think about it, Eric, that's only four years removed from the AJ De La Garza, Omar Gonzalez uh, picks that, that changed the face of the LA galaxy in 2009. Yeah. And I, and I think it, it's also being burned uh, by some picks in the past as well. I think I, uh, we go back to Nacho Maganto. I think he, he got Nacho. picked up in the, I, I bought all the Nacho Maganto stock. Mm -hmm. I was excited. I thought he was going to be a big part of the team and just never, never panned out. And then all the way through with, you know, Tomas Hilliard Arce, Emil Cuello. Retired now. Tom, yeah. Tomas Hilliard Arce retired from yeah. soccer. Uh, Emil Cuello, we're talk, we'll talk about him a little bit. Yeah. Last year, the, the Tom Smart saga, uh, you know, the, that never ended up working out. So it just seems like it's not worth getting emotionally invested. Although when you do look at the highlight reel and the players that they did pick up, uh, it is looks a little bit more promising uh, than maybe the picks that they had in the last, you know, the last year. 
I, re- I really want somebody to go through and make like a highlight reel of us on the podcast of us doing our best stuff. And then we could be like, see, that's how we are all the time, right? <laughs> like we're just on fire all the time. Instead, I'm over here hitting the wrong buttons and doing like crazy stuff. And, you know, I think I probably lo- loaded up the uh, the panda horn to the Yeah, the panda horn is is, is loaded up as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the bottom line is those those highlight packages aren't real. And let's get to it because it's hysterical. Let me remind everybody, first of all, the fact that these players are drafted does not add them to the roster. If you go over to my rosters, they're not on there. There's a reason because they don't get automatically added. The LA Galaxy have a chance now to sign these players and their MLS rights are held for the next two years, even if they don't sign them. Um, and that's important to note because we're going to have some wacky things in this draft. By the way, I would like to point out neither of these draft picks, Eric, came out unscathed in terms of something wacky happening. All right. So uh, the very first one, remember the LA Galaxy traded the number, their eighth round or eighth overall pick in the first round uh, to the Portland Timbers whenever they got Via Fania. Okay. In exchange, they got Portland's 16th overall pick. So the LA Galaxy's first pick in the, in the, in the first round was 16. Okay. So they dropped eight spots. They picked up Josh Drack. Now I like the name, Josh. That's a strong start already. Um, and the the Drac thing is a little it's it's weird to me. It just it's, I don't I don't think I've ever seen that name before. But to me it, it reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy. So he's Drac the Destroyer. I mean he he has the built in nickname. You know, if, if he comes in as an attacking defender, I, I think that Drac the Destroyer, we can get that hashtag to take off if you're, things work out. You're all over it. Okay, good good to know. Well, here's the here's an interesting thing. Uh, I actually have more information on the second round draft pick than I do on the first round draft pick. So let's go over it. The well, let's yes. let's give no, Josh no. Drack some uh, some credit, right? Oh yeah, I'm going to, but I'm going to tell you what's okay. wacky about it. Why okay. why this started out to being wacky? So 16th round pick. If you were listening to the coverage, uh, you heard the guys on oh, yeah. MLS Soccer, right? Andrew Weeby, you heard uh, Matt Doyle and uh, Charlie Davies. Uh, you heard them talking. They were talking about Josh Drack as a left back slash slash left wing back, a defender. Um, so whenever the LA Galaxy drafted him, the draft card that they have out says forward from the University of Denver. Okay. Now, University of Denver is interesting because both players tonight came from the University of Denver. Uh, the last time the LA Galaxy picked two players from the same university, AJ Delagarza and Omar Gonzalez uh, from the University of Maryland, where my wife went and who, which men's team I have adopted. So I, I was I like that I married into the to the national champs like that. Uh, but the University of Denver, um, he is a converted forward. Uh, that's really what you need to know. He just started playing left back slash left wing back in that sort of, he's an attacking, listen, P, I, Eric, you and I were texting about this. We, he's, he's an attacking left back. No, he's just a left back in today's yeah. modern soccer world. All left backs attack. Okay. That's how it works. So he's just, he's just a left back. But the bottom line is he has an offensive pedigree that they're going to try and convert um, into a, a left back role. And it has only happened probably in the last year that he's been converted. I don't know what to make of any of that besides to say, okay, is like, is that really the best use of, of a draft pick is to get a guy who's converted? So what say you, Mr. Hammer? I, I, it doesn't worry me as much because you see this happen uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, we, we've seen Chris Albright comes to mind with the galaxy, someone who was an attacker and then got converted uh, to a defender and it ended up working out. Uh, Demarcus Beasley, as he aged in his career, he turned into a defender. Uh, you know, started off as an attacker, you know, so, so the, uh, Matt Beasler is another one midfielder, uh, you know, more attacking player converted into a defender. So it's not unheard of. It, it's more, it's be more bizarre if you played goalkeeper and then we want him uh, to be a striker, that'd be stranger. Uh, so, so it doesn't worry me as much. So with someone who has an attacking uh, ability, like you said, right. Defenders nowadays, they're moving, they're a part of the offense. It's always pushing forward, trying to send those crosses in, being, you know, a part of that counterattack. That, that's just the way the game is played now. So to me, if he's recently converted, that's okay. If, if they're, he's going to be plugged in and he's athletic, right? I, you know, who knows? You, you can see it working out. It doesn't worry me as much. Uh, it doesn't seem like a wasted spot. Someone like Nick DePew, who we've talked about, and I know he's been on the show, we talked about he he was a forward. Yep. So I think people who have a knack for scoring, that's not a bad thing. I think if, if you're a professional athlete, you probably speak to every one who's gone pro, they were probably the best player on their youth team and played, a t- right. you know, forward or, or attacker uh, in some way. And then they ended up converting uh, at some point in their career. So it doesn't worry me as much. 
the uh, the the thing I go back to is that the Dutch are famous for this as well, right? It's like their best strikers end up being their strikers, their second best strikers end up being their midfielders, and their third best strikers end up being yeah. defenders. You know, yep. and and the Dutch have a pretty good handle on on the game of soccer, so you know there is something to that. I understand it. I see where it's going, but I mean, you know, bottom line is you with any of these, you're taking a flyer on these guys. You have no idea how they're going to pan out. Um, and uh, somebody joked, did they only scout the university of Denver? Is that, <laughs> is that it? I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's, and, it's and I think with the COVID concern concerns and you know, the lack of a combine, they had kind of a little bit of a makeshift combine. That's probably how the, what they had to do. They probably had limited film. It's not like they could be traveling to different schools. Uh, right. so they maybe went, and focused on one or two and said, you know, we like, we like this pairing. We like this two, this duo. Let's go for it. Yeah. It should be noted. Uh, neither of these guys played last year basically because 2020 got, you know, sort of pushed to 2021 because of uh, COVID. So, um, there's not a lot of information on that. So anyway, that's, that's Josh Drack. Uh, he was the 16th overall pick, uh, in that first round for the LA galaxy. He is a defender. All right. So he is a left back. Now, when you look at left backs for the LA Galaxy, it happens to be one of their deepest positions, Eric. Uh, left back right now, you would have uh, you have uh, Via Fania. Via Fania just acquired from Portland. He's the starting left back. You look at uh, left back two would probably be Danilo Acosta, Danny Acosta. Left back three is Triore. You can swap two and three. I don't care. So you have three players there right now on the roster. Those are rostered player spots um, yeah. that, that are all left backs. So Sure, um, but how many are, are left back forwards? Totally true. I mean, Probably, I can't, that's a priceless position. It is a pri- it is priceless. Uh, it is priceless. <laughs> uh, we'll see if the LA Galaxy end up uh, putting him on the roster. Uh, with him, it's a little bit clearer. Uh, he's still, let's say it, it's a little bit clearer. Damian Calhoun, uh, obviously covers the LA galaxy, does a great job. Shout out to Damian. Haven't seen him in a while. Uh, he's still, uh, he says that Josh Drack still has some college eligibility left. So technically he could stay and play in another year for the university of Denver. Uh, if he does that, the LA galaxy still hold his MLS, right? So if he comes out after that and then the LA galaxy could put him on a roster and still sign him. So that may be a conversation that they have with him. Uh, he says he told J- Damian. Uh, if they tell me I have to be in LA, then I will be in LA, right? So this kid is is rock and rolling, ready to go. So still some eligibility there. Now, if you thought that was weird that the Galaxy draft a forward who's actually a defender, who's all that stuff, uh, and some question marks around that, boy, do I have a story to tell you. The LA Galaxy second round pick, the number eight pick in the second round was a kid named Preston Judd. Judd has finished up his eligibility with the University of Denver. He is, in fact, a forward. Um, So you actually have an attacking player here. Uh, He is a Las Vegas native. And Eric, he recently, and as in recently, I mean January 13th of 2021, he recently (laughs) signed... Yeah, a week ago. He recently signed a professional contract with Sporting Kansas City to the USL f- affiliate of Sporting KC. Um, fun. Good times. Uh, the LA Galaxy uh, draft him, and I have been told specifically that they have the ability to negotiate and hold his MLS rights. Any player who is on the eligibility list for the draft, Eric... Uh, the LA Galaxy have the ability to negotiate a contract with them and hold their professional level rights at in, in Major League Soccer. Uh, if for some reason they don't work out a contract with Preston Judd, maybe he doesn't even want to come in to the LA Galaxy because he thinks that there's no chance. And he has already signed a contract with the USL side SKC2. Um, he can go to SKC2. But if he ever goes up to MLS, again, the Galaxy own his rights for the next two years. Um you know why the, <laughs> you know who the winner is right who, uh, preston judd it's preston judd because he already has a contract and it's basically the galaxy's you know job to either meet it or, or make it enticing for him otherwise he has you know a great fallback plan uh to go back to just the other funny note just to make it add one more wackier thing to it with the pictures that they used for the draft i know uh you know jason aka sushi's in the in the chat right now talking up all of our, our draft picks but he posted uh, a joke about about uh 
these players being, you know, the goat and the next best thing. But when he posted a picture of Preston Judd, I actually thought it was Josh Drack because they went to the same university and they were on the same team. They clearly dyed their hair on the same day. So they both have dyed hair. So I was like, wait, is this a different player? Or is this the same player? So they even look similar in their headshots. So that's kind of a funny thing. All, so all, we'll all, see- all white guys look the same anyway, Eric. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> you know, unity, unity, unity. Josh. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm trying, <laughs> but it, I, you know, if it works out great, I think forward is a spot where the galaxy need depth. And if he's a, an option that uh, was was polished enough and good enough to be signed by SKC two, maybe the galaxy take a you know find a way to to fit him into the blend six three one eighty five. We'll see if uh, if that is correct right. uh, as far as his, his weight. He really weighs two eighty five. He's he's six three, but he's very round. I'm sure. Yeah, but I think it, it doesn't hurt. And and with, when I talked about the galaxy and, and these draft picks not necessarily panning out uh maybe they don't need them to pan out and maybe it's not a bad thing but it doesn't hurt to try it and see what happens uh so you know if not it it works just the same as their their third round pick which they passed on uh let's get to uh to the other funny part about this is uh uh, preston judd actually played at california baptist university which is in riverside right And according to his sister, if we believe that his sister is the person who was responding to Instagram comments, and again, I get catfished all the time, so, you know, I can only report what I have. Um, By the way, my catfishing started a long time ago in high school, I believe was the first time I ever got catfished by a girl who pretended to be, um, uh, what was the name of the, uh, Dawson's Creek, one of the Dawson Creek girls, and got one of my buddies to be like, oh yeah, I'm that person. It was a long time ago. I don't want to go into the story. No one watched the show? No one knew it? Katie Holmes and Michelle this, Williams. This was like? like before this was like the early ages of like chat rooms and stuff, Eric. Okay. Wow. Let's not pretend like Twitter was around or something like that. The, you couldn't just slip into somebody's DMS. Okay. That didn't, I was going to say, and the, p- the picture also needed to come down in layers. It was yeah. like, almost, <laughs> almost my brow went, oh, looking at. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so that, what is, that's what it was. Uh, Sophie's over here. She's like, Jen, uh, I forget. It was, um, uh, yeah, it was Jen actually. Yes, it was, it was, it was her. So anyway, yes, that was the first time I ever got catfish next. Um, so (laughs) if according to Judd, if this person is actually Judd's sister and we know that he played at the California Baptist university, she says they went to LA galaxy games all the time and that they're big galaxy fans and that he is looking forward to this. So if you want to throw that into the burner and have some good times, there you go. That's what you go have. for. All right. Yes, it was AOL. The people in the chat room. Yes, AOL. Absolutely AOL. Um, Simpler times. And the chat rooms, man. Uh, I was trying to remember what some of the names of those chat rooms were. Like, <laughs> like it was like there was a teen one. I was trying to remember. And I was a teenager, so it was allowed. Okay. I don't want people to think that I was diving down. No, I was. I was a teenager. It was fine. Anyway, a lot of a lot of good times in those chat rooms. Um, let's get to some. So, so, uh, I guess to finish up the the MLS. Uh, super draft is that neither of these guys are guaranteed anything. Uh, it's unknown right now if they'll even Eric bring them in for preseason. We don't know that. Uh, we don't know if any of them will be signed. If you look at the LA galaxy and the first team signings they are making right now, I find it hard to believe either of these guys make it. And for, um, you know, for, for Judd, he already has a USL contract. So it's not like you're probably going to get him to play for LA Galaxy 2 after he already signed a USL contract. In fact, he might not even be able to because his USL rights are held by Sporting Kansas City on that side. So that's not probably, you know, is there is there more of a chance for for Drac? There's, there's probably a better chance that he could possibly be an LA Galaxy 2 signing. So again, just sort of keep your eye on that. We have not seen a draft pick pan out in a very long time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Tom Smarts and, and Cuellos and everything else, yes. The, the one hope that, the, that you may be is there there is going to be the reserve league. So uh, in addition to Galaxy 2, there's also going to be some reserve games. So there's like an extra squad, half squad that some of these players can go to. So that is that is something that didn't exist in most recent years. That's kind of where you're better than Galaxy 2, but not quite first team players. That's where right. they land. And so that may be where these guys fit in. Well, I mean, here's the thing is that even with that, from what I understand on the reserve squad is you still have to be listed on the first team roster in order to play those. And you can loan guys up from LA Galaxy 2 to play in that reserve squad um, thing, but you still have to be on the roster. And right now with 22 of, you know, 30 players on that, I find that's where it's difficult. It's wasting space. It is. You need game changers. And and you have, and let's be honest, you have a pipeline coming. Let's get to that pipeline. Uh, The LA Galaxy have announced as of Thursday night, two of three 
homegrown player contracts. Now, you didn't see it named homegrown anywhere, and apparently MLS is trying to get away from sort of the homegrown terminology, but it's a roster designation. So there should be some more emphasis on that from MLS, and MLS is being a little stupid again in terms of how they do things. They're supposed to announce that they use targeted allocation money when they use that. They're supposed to announce that they use general allocation money whenever they sign somebody. They're supposed to announce that if a player comes on that he's a homegrown player, um, so that way you understand what that means for his roster and what that means for his salary cap hit, right? Because we know that players within, by the way, uh, spots 21 to 30 do not have salary cap hits as long as they're making above a certain amount, below a certain amount, okay? There's no salary cap uh, hit to that. So homegrown players are huge because that means you can put players on your team. They don't count it on the salary cap, right? And that means you can put other people and spend more money on them whenever you bring them on. So homegrown players are huge. The LA Galaxy, as we sit right now, have seven homegrown players on this roster. That's amazing. Yeah, I, it's pretty that, incredible. That is so much fun. That's that's and Jared uh, Jared Dubois, former co-host Jared Dubois, was out there saying he goes, "This is part of the dream of what LA Galaxy fans have been waiting." He goes, "Now the second part of that team is for them to be successful with these players." Yeah, I think right. we're still we're still waiting for that one. Yeah, and and yeah. you can see that. So anyway, um, the first signing that the LA Galaxy announced was 18 year old midfielder um, Adam Saldana. Uh, Saldana comes from LA Galaxy 2. Uh, he is up through the academy. He is a homegrown player, and I've heard nothing but great things about him. Dennis DeClosa mentioned his name multiple times. Uh, this is a kid who can come in um, and play uh, in, in the midfield. And, and listen, I don't think that any of these guys right now are going to see a ton of minutes on the senior team. I don't think that's that's the thing. But the fact is they're signing them to, to, to first-team contracts, and they're going to be on the roster. Now, some of them may get loaned down to LA Galaxy 2 for the year that's fine too but they're locking in these promising prospects eric and they're not letting them go somewhere else now if somebody goes in and wants to take adam saldana they gotta pay yeah. uh and, and that's the big part of that absolutely and and i think the the and we're going to get to jalen neal as well but saldana is also someone who's been on the the youth national team radar so when you think about the level of player that this is this is someone who's kind of being you know, next in line for a lot of these areas and the galaxy being uh, one of those spots. So you're, you're absolutely right that this is, uh, you know, it's important to give them those roster spots. Don't expect them to be first team contributors, but at the same time, it, this is a positive thing. Like, like he said, Jared was mentioning, this is the dream. This is what you want. That Academy pipeline, uh, you know, from the Academy to G2 to the first team, this is what you want to start building. So I, I look at it similar to the Cameron Dunbar move last season uh, where maybe you get one or two games where you just get that experience. The bigger, the bigger experience for them is, is training with the first team every day, day in and day out and being a part of that process. I think that's the big thing for, for these young players to get used to being a professional. Um, and so it's, it's exciting to have these youth players, you know, come from the Academy and see that there's a path, especially with the number of homegrowns that are on the roster, which doesn't include Julian Araujo, who, you know, technically should be in that group, but does, is not, not included yeah. in that group. Uh, you know, so if you include him, that's even more. So it, it's a positive thing that we could see it. We're, we're just waiting, uh, you know, for that player to hit, maybe Julian is probably the closest, but you know, if, if he's promising and, and goes elsewhere, uh, you know, you can wear that as a feather in the cap, but at the same time, we want someone to be that star for the galaxy and play for the galaxy for an extended period of time. That's the goal. That's the dream. Greg Vanny, uh, known for developing the young talent, Eric, he's the guy who wants that. Um, so he's getting that. We talk about Jalen Neal, six foot one, 145 pounds, a, cent a center back. Um, he is at six foot one, not an undersized center back at 145 pounds. He's an undersized center back, but he's 17 years old. He hasn't, yes. he's got to put on those, those, those big boy muscles here pretty soon. Um, so he's from Lakewood, California. We had Sa Saldana who's from Panorama city, California. And then the one that they're going to announce tomorrow. And we've talked about these, I think like a month ago, we first mentioned yeah. that this was uh, likely to happen and we saw some indications that it had happened. Um, so I know Ives was out there trying to say that. Like he was all breaking the news. I'm like, dude, that's like a month old. Um, Marcus for Kranis uh, is the other one. Another center back, another defender, age 17, six foot. Oh, 170 pounds. I mean, I've, I've said it so many times uh, from Santa Clarita, California. I've said it so many times, get me them domestic center backs. Get them to me. Call. I want them all, Eric. Give them to me all and put them in the starting lineup and let these guys play. Um, yeah. This is this is an exciting time for the Galaxy, I think. 
yeah, give me all the six foot plus <laughs> domestic center backs. So yeah, this is an exciting time. And Jalen Neal, I think the part that you didn't mention that this is the coolest story of the week and the feel good oh, yes. story mm-hmm. of the week is that he was, uh, you know, escorted uh, A.J. De La Garza out when he was a young child as part of, you know, when they hold hands with the mascots out on the field. Uh, Jalen Neal was A.J.'s partner there, and that's just so cool that he went from walking out on the field with the players to now playing for that professional club. Uh, what a moment. And then uh, something earlier in the week, uh, A.J. De La Garza obviously going to the New England Revolution. Uh, he's not going to wear his storied number 20. Uh, because, you know, t- Taylor Twelman and the ties with this club. So uh, I think his mom's on Twitter. Jalen Neal's mom is on Twitter and recommended, you know, wearing Jalen's number. So it just kind of it's it, it warms your heart as, as a Galaxy fan and a Galaxy supporter to see stuff like that happen. Uh, I don't know if AJ is actually going to wear that as a suggestion, but just right. the fact that it's a possibility is, is very cool. Well, and AJ uh, responded back. He was like, hey, great job. Now I'll see you on the pitch. Right. So, I mean, there's that. He understands. Man, it just makes me feel old. First of yeah. all, when you see that picture, I'm like, I remember, you know, AJ De La Garza doing that and and how it goes. Um, so anyway, we have uh, Marcus for Kranos is the is the third one it's supposed to be announced on Friday at some point uh, with the super draft today. They sort of uh, paused that and, and shifted yeah. it again for another one. Um, speaking of and, and listen. This doesn't change anything with the LA Galaxy this year. Um, I don't see any huge impacts. Maybe maybe these kids grow into some spots. Maybe they have to play some minutes. All that stuff would be good, and you want to get them some experience. I would hope they'd spend most of their year with LA Galaxy too, and I'm hopefully with COVID and the restrictions on transfers, Eric, and going between clubs, hopefully that eases a little bit because last year it was very tough. You didn't get those guys, um, you know, like Dunbar should have played a lot more games at LA Galaxy 2 last year. And because of the restrictions between, you know, teams and transferring guys and the quarantine periods between that, it it wasn't something that they could do. Um, So I'm hopeful that these guys get some LA Galaxy 2 playing time because that's really where they need to develop. But I'm also hopeful that if you go into the, you know, U.S. Open Cup games, perhaps if those still get played, um, get into some of these other uh, nations, what, not Nations League. What was the other Leagues one? Cup. Leagues Cup. Yeah, That's it. I was going to say that. This is your U.S. Open Cup, your Leagues Cup, those type of tournaments, if they still happen. I, I would doubt something like the Leagues Cup goes through right. uh, just because I, I don't think we're as close to uh, getting over the p- pandemic hill, you know, as, as maybe we want, we want to be. Um, so, so we'll see if that actually goes through, but that's, that's where you sh- would expect to see these players. Uh, the, the Emil Cuello showcase, the league's club. The league's uh, <laughs> when we talk about him, we'll talk about those highlights. No, that's, that's good. Um, so anyway, so that's what it is. Again, it doesn't change things this year and I don't see these guys eating up roster spots. If you put all three of them on the LA galaxy, have 23 roster spots taken up seven roster spots remaining up to 30. I imagine that there are five or six of those players that are on there. And I would expect right now that the LA galaxy will go over the 30 in the preseason. Um, so just expect that number to rise. I say that there's seven spots left and I, I think maybe that's a little bit of, 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 of gaslighting for, for people getting everybody a little fired up like we don't have any players yeah, um and, but, and that's well, probably my fault but you but know. to be fair it is it is kind of scary you know when you think that that's not a lot of roster spots and we we talk about the roster composition all the time you know where where's that game changer where where's that giovinko where's you know is pavone coming back these these are key key spots that we need to worry about and so seven spots is not a lot uh but you think with their international spot flex, flexibility uh, and the TAM room that looks to be available, yes. you, you you would think we should be able to bring in some big dogs soon. Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. Uh, LA Galaxy defender Julian Araujo has been called. We talked about him a little bit earlier, but he's been called back into the U23 camp. Remember, Araujo had to leave the camp early, um, basically because he had uh, some sort of illness. If you're reading between the lines, that illness was he had COVID-19. Um, apparently, he's healthy enough and well enough, which is good signs, uh, that he's been called back into the U23 camp. That's important. The U23s are the Olympic team that is supposed to be going to Japan. Um, and having said that, we'll talk about the Olympics here. It seems that, at least in Japan, that the government there has decided that that they don't want to have the Olympics and that there's no way for it to go forward, not with the pandemic and that they're going to have to cancel it. And they want to just basically bump it to the next, um, to the next Olympic slot. So that way they can, they can redo it. Uh, the IOC, the international Olympic committee today was like, no, 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 there's no plan B. We got, we got to have the Olympics. It, there, <laughs> it, 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 there's not going to be Olympics. Um, Good and bad. You know, Julian Araujo would have gotten a really good run out, I think, on this Olympic team, uh, would have gotten a lot of experience in the yep. international side of things there, Eric. But 
uh, the good news is that he'll be back with the LA Galaxy a lot more because we were <laughs> expecting him to be gone for a significant amount of time. Yeah, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say good news, bad news. The, you know, the good news is he's called back into camp. Seems like he couldn't catch a break. And then the bad news again, now that the Olympics look like look, they will probably be canceled. I think they even talked about that Japan not getting that spot until 2032 because that's the next available right. uh, Olympic slot if it does get canceled. So, uh, you know, it is unfortunate that he missed out. But when we talked about all the left back depth, uh, but we don't have right back depth. So if, if Julian's not gone for a lot of the time, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, yeah, there's no, there's nobody there right now. I don't know of a right back the LA Galaxy have that is behind Julian Araujo. There's zeros. There's you know, uh, right back RB one Araujo, RB two question mark. Um, <laughs> sort of as a set, you can probably shift some guys from left back and and do that if you need to. And with the four quote unquote four left backs that the LA Galaxy currently have, maybe somebody does get shifted um, into playing that spot. But right now it's Julian Araujo's and only Julian Araujo's. I still think the LA Galaxy going to make an addition there. Um, I I would expect. If it's me, I'm looking at a veteran right back uh, who will play some minutes, but also know that he's the number two on that right back side um, to to Julian Rajo. So we'll see how they uh, sort of it's put a, that together. It's a lot to ask for. Well, I mean, I, I like to make the perfect suggestion, and then whenever the LA Galaxy go away with that, I can complain uh, or say they should have listened to me. Um, yeah. I, by the way, I have nobody in mind who that would be. That's not my job. I'm not here to fuck. <laughs> well, I don't have the guys. That's the the funny thing. I think Sophie's lighting us up in the chat. You know, we need the game changer. We need that that DP signing something big that's going to spark the galaxy. And and to me, uh, I'm right there with you. Who's that player? I don't, I don't know, know who's out there that, that can be that right now. Right. Uh, you know, it's, that's why I've always said maybe till summer, wait till the, these you know big name players are out of contract. That might be the time to strike. Uh, you know, still still interested in Pavon. Pavon would be that third designated player right now. The Galaxy have two of three slots there. We have four of eight international slots filled. So a lot of room. I still feel like there are five relatively large signings coming for the LA Galaxy whenever you really look at it. I think you, you go and get a second striker of some sort. Uh, you need a, a left wing. You need a right wing. Uh, you know, you need wingers. Those are big positions. There's, I think, a possibility still for the central attacking midfielder. There's that borderline borderline starter right back that you need. I mean, so if I if you go out and get those, that's four positions that you have to fill that are technically almost starting positions. Um, so, you know, that's I, I say everybody just be calm. And we're going to talk now about MLS and MLSPA, uh, MLS Players Association, and then talking about the collective bargaining agreement. Now, We've talked about uh, the force majeure and we've talked about, uh, you know, the the MLS invoking the force majeure and how now MLSPA was pretty ticked off about that and, and doing that. Now, we know that a an offer was sent over that basically said that there was a hundred percent pay for the players in the CBA. It doesn't say anything <laughs> about it doesn't say anything about um you know, are, are you okay over there? It looks like you almost died for a second. I just want to make sure you're okay. I, I forgot to mute myself. I have a, you know, slight cough. Right. I've been COVID tested. Co- COVID? COVID negative. Okay. I was just, just to let you know. Okay. Uh, so talking. slight cough. I've been muting myself, but I couldn't, couldn't get away from it. And it was just unfortunate, the timing when you're talking about uh, player payments and then I start coughing, like I'm yes. sending a signal. Yes. I was <laughs> wondering if you were for a second there. I was just, I just want to make sure you're okay. I could call, I'm alive. Your, I'm I good. Could call your wife and be like, you know, CPR now. Uh, if that happens, I'm, should, I might make that request anyway. <laughs> good luck with that. Um, anyway, so MLS and MLSPA. So th- we know that they offered 100 percent pay uh, to the players, but they didn't talk about bonus structure. And what they wanted to do was extend the CBA by an additional two years all the way through 2027, I believe. Uh, so through 2025 and then 2027 uh, would have been the extension. So today, uh, Commissioner Garber in in something <laughs> that. I, I laughed at as soon as I saw it. It says <laughs> commissioner letter to fans. It's almost uh, like a, yeah. a reading from the book of Garber. Right. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> uh, this is more of a fairy tale than the Bible is. Let me tell you. Um, here, here is the, the commissioner letter to fans. I'm not going to read it to you. It's more that it's out there. And this was never a letter to fans. This was a direct 
response to MLSPA and MLSPA, the players association got that whoever's running their social media, got it and said, retweeted it with next time, just add us. Yeah. Right. And, and <laughs> every, perfect. yeah. And everybody saw through this, Eric, this was not one of those things where we sit there and go, Oh yeah, this is, this is absolutely a letter to fans. It's not a letter to fans. Um, no. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a justification for things and it is major league soccer calling out, uh, MLSPA for not responding. And the big thing that we need to understand is that there has to be a response by 128 and major league soccer says they're not negotiating past January 28th. Well, today is the 21st. So we have a week, um, of, of, of time in order for there to be a response. But we also, we also saw last season, the precedent that was set, they kept extending that as the negotiations went on. So, um, you know, they can say that, but we've already seen, we've seen this movie before last year with the extension. So we know that 28 date is not the drop dead date. Yeah, it, it, it's not. And by the way, they also in this, you know, Garber's like, we're going to start in March. You know, that's our plan. And that's also, you know, a bit of a fairy tale um, from everything that we're seeing. It just doesn't seem likely that the, that MLS is going to do that. Um, so this was a public negotiation. That's what this was. They put it out in order to get a response from the MLSPA. And the MLSPA has already told its players to be ready for a strike for a work stoppage. Um, if there is no deal at 128, Eric, the owners, I believe, can invoke the force measure, which they technically already have, but in, by invoking the force measure, they can then lock the players out. Um, which, again, during a pandemic, do you really want to be playing this game? There's some PR games being played, and I think the well, players know very well that no response is going to get you know, a drastic reaction and hopefully a loss on the PR side of things for, for the MLS owners. Yeah, I think this letter you're talking, it, this is all a, a PR battle and, and the letter itself, some of the, the, the quotes that I kind of highlighted that were, were pointed and you could tell they were included for a very specific reason. Uh, you know, one quote that said, unlike other leagues here and abroad, we are hit harder financially when our fans can't attend games. So he's basically, you know, so that's putting the ball in the, the M- MLSPA, uh, you know, when the fans can't attend, we're hit harder. You know, the, the, the sympathy card here. Yes. Uh, it says they were forced to reduce their staff at the club level and then at the league level. They reduced salaries. They made budget cuts while the players got 95%. So they made sure to include that. I think it was reported that they got some pay, but I don't think we real, we realized it was as high as 95%. So that's a pretty good chunk uh, of a player's salary. So he's highlighting these things. It's kind of the state media <laughs> approach. Right. Uh, and then, and then he, he mentioned multiple times that we've reached out with the MLSPA, the owners have given something and we still haven't heard back. We, pro- you know, we made a proposal two weeks ago and look forward to f- receiving a response, just kind of these petty undertones, uh, you know, and it's all a PR move. And the thing, only thing that it makes me think of is and I've talked about this with you peeking behind the curtain a little bit of the LA galaxy and, and, and working with the show. And you realize this isn't a mid- mythical, magical thing. It's a workplace. It's a business, right. you know, all the, the petty drama that you have with your boss or your CEO or your superintendent or, or whatever it is. It's it's and your union uh, level negotiations. It's all the same thing. <laughs> these, yes. are, these are humans. These are people who negotiate. It's a workplace environment. Uh, and it's the same type of thing that's being played out here. There's a, a message being played out to the public, uh, uh, but it's very pointed at a specific group. And then, you know, you, you have the other group play back and forth. So uh, not that di- different than probably wherever your your workplace is. Yeah. Um, and, and again, this isn't a letter to the fans. This is not a letter to the fans. I mean, I'll be honest, you lose points for me right away if you just don't call it what it is, which is it should have been like an open letter to the MLSPA, you know, yeah. and, and you could have said that. But to try to bring the fans into it. Um, and then here's the other thing. Oh my God, the owners, we're losing so much money. (laughs) We can't possibly survive another year of this. However, why don't we just tack on another two years of the CBA? We'll take the losses now. I mean, we can't afford it, but we'll take the losses now and we'll make it up on the, on the back end of, of the thing that their logic doesn't make sense. Um, I, I don't hate the idea of extending the CBA. Um, it's not a horrible one to me, Eric, at least, but it's clearly, the owners have sat there and, and calculated some things and said, okay, we can make some money on this on the backside if we put this together. I mean, they, yeah. they did the math. I think w- when we first talked about this a, a couple weeks ago, I um, I almost, you know, well, essentially I, t- I took the side of the owners here because they said, well, they're, they're offering the concessions. They're going to take the hit at the beginning, but where they're going to make it up, like you said, is on the back end. Uh, but again, this is their first offer. When you make your first offer, you try to do it with what's, what's 
in best interest for you and hope that you know the other side takes it so they know that there's going to be a lucrative as time goes on and the pandemic goes away you know they're going to have the the players under their thumb for an extra two seasons uh and so they know that that's going to benefit them so that's their opening you know their opening shot and, and we know that the you know the the sympathy card that they're trying to play they know that there's there's a positive on the back end well, it's really interesting as all this is going on. And, and by this way, this feels like it's still going to delay the season. I don't believe the March date and you can't prove to me that it's going to be the March date right now. And I, I won't I don't care if Don Garber came on the show and said, oh, yeah, we're starting on this date. Here's the schedule. I'm like, no, you're not. So um, that's that that seems n- unlikely to me. January 21st and, and, you know, starting a game in March with no preseason, no camp, no, not, that this that is a quick turnaround. It is. And listen, the preseasons are supposed to start at the end of January, right? I mean, the January 28th, we are getting to when the preseasons are supposed to start and supposed to report. And I haven't. It's been quiet. There's crickets out there right now. So um, we'll see what ends up happening. And I think a lot of it hinges on this CBA. I was totally wrong last year in terms of they got it done without a work stoppage. And I thought there was going to be a work stoppage. I can be wrong again. I wouldn't be surprised if suddenly it just is. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll deal with it. It's one year. We're going to set it by one year and we'll call it a day. And you know, that'll be moved forward. Maybe that's what it all, maybe that was that the owners always that's, wanted to extend it by a year. Right. I that mean, seems likely. Yeah. It's like, whenever, I, I bet on that. It, it's like whenever you're selling a car uh, online, you list it for 15 cause you know, somebody's going to offer you 12 and you're going to eventually sell it for 13, five, you know, it's like that type of thing. Um, so here's while all that is going on though, Eric, the USL. So the second, division of the pyramid in the United States, uh, USL and the USLPA, the USL players association are close to reaching agreement on what could be the first collective bargaining agreement in that league. Now the ML, the, uh, USL PA, the players association was actually formed back in 2018. Uh, and now the, the league voluntarily acknowledge them, which is always a good start for that. Um, and they've been sort of going through these CBAs and, and doing these things and trying to get somewhere. And apparently there was a big breakthrough um, in the last couple of weeks uh, that now put it onto a fact that after months and months of work, you could just be a few days or a few weeks from actually getting an, uh, a USL uh, collective bargaining agreement. Uh, one of the big things that has sort of happened is that the USLPA stop signing international uh, letters or no objection letters for internationals. This is crazy. This is part of the P1 thing that has to happen, right? Yeah. So if you're getting a P1 visa, uh, the league uh, and basically the players association within that league has to sign a no objection letter that says, yes, you can allow this international player to come into our league and it will not hurt our player pool by doing that, right? Same thing happens in Major League Soccer, by the way. The, ML- the MLSPA has to sign those international waivers and say, yes, David Beckham coming in will not hurt us. It will help us and we are fine with that and blah, 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 the whole deal. And they generally just rubber stamp those and, and, and send them off. Mm-hmm. Um, USLPA was like, no, we're not going to sign those anymore. And that stopped everything. So all of a sudden, people couldn't sign international players. And so it, again, who knows if it was actually for that reason, Eric, but because they did it, now they are closer to a deal and they're talking about minimum player compensation, standard contract term lengths across the entire league and establishing baseline operating conditions for that second tier, which is badly needed because let me tell you, they're, they're, you want to talk about you know getting dressed in the parking lot and then like yeah. doing that whole thing. That's USL right now, even at the championship level. And it's funny, and I think it's important to mention with USL, this isn't just SKC2 and Galaxy2. These are professional franchises that are operating. So when you talk about um, you know, not allowing international players to come in. It's not academy players, homegrowns, you know, who, who went to the college system. So these players need professional players, men, uh, you know, to come in and fill their, their squad. So making that makes a statement to, to get things done and to, to, to get things to move. So I, I could see why that could be something that can really light a fire and get things going for USL because some of these, the, these USL franchises that are not co- connected to an MLS club, uh, the, you know, they're really hit by the pandemic. They're really struggling, and they need to they need to get business back open for those uh, those those USL clubs. Yeah. It's, uh, so just something else. And by the way, LA Galaxy two part of this. They're in USL. They their players are part of the USL PA, which is interesting because some of them are actually on professional contracts which, with MLS, which means they wouldn't be part of the USL PA. They're part of the MLS PA. 
Very fun. Always good. More wackiness going on all across the league. All right. Um, final little wrap-ups here. Uh, Emil Cuello, uh, we were talking about him earlier. Uh, he has joined San Antonio. Um, so uh, San Antonio, I believe the the same place that uh, Bradford Jameson went at in San Antonio That's FC. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has joined them. So obviously no longer with the LA Galaxy. Um, I think his option was declined or his contract. Uh, he was out of contract. <laughs> however, that ended up happening. He was gone. Uh, he's now gone and he will go and be with San Antonio. So there you go. USL player Emil Cuello. At least he didn't retire like Tom- Tomas Hilliard Arce. <laughs> I feel like there's shade being thrown at THA there. I, uh, but it's just weird. I, I mean, I got <laughs> I remember talking and I got a quote about him because he came from Stanford. Um, mm-hmm. And I got a quote from him and everybody's like, oh man, this kid is going to be great the whole deal. And then you just, n- nope, gone. Yeah, he came from like the, the Jordan Morris era, you know, Stanford championship team. So yeah, I'm with you, but best of luck to Emil Cuello. We talked about uh, the Emil Cuello showcase, which was the League's Cup, just something kind of funny. And when we talk about USL uh, franchises, this is they need players, they need to fill their rosters with, you know, veterans or someone with a little bit of pedigree. And that's that's where why they got Emil Cuello and they, they showed their highlight reel uh, and it was the goal against Cruz Azul and the League's Cup. Yep. And it was from one angle. And then the second highlight was from a different angle. Same yes. goal. So, you know, <laughs> you know, stretching to get those highlights in. But good for him. Found a landing spot. Living the dream. Playing professional soccer. You know, what more can you ask for? So good no, for him. No, Hope he all, does well there. Always great. Roger, by the way, hitting us up with the super chat. $5 in the Thank super you, chat. Roger. Thank you, Roger. Roger, you need to type something so that way we can properly acknowledge you, have an opinion on something, and make Eric, like, you know, defend it or something like that. Um, so we, <laughs> we appreciate that. Uh, as always, if you're listening or watching on our live show, uh, you can use the super chat and you basically tip us. Uh, and if you put something in there, a question, or if you have an opinion on something, we will share that opinion, irregardless. Aaron dropped in, um, which is his full name, irregardless, Aaron, uh, for $3 Thanks, as well in the super chat. So thank you, Aaron. We appreciate that as well. Um, real quick, uh, roster update, just sort of where we stand right now. It's 22 of 30. Whenever they so- sign uh, for Kranus, there, it will be 23 of 30. And again, I need to be specific about this because I think people get a little bit freaked out about some of that stuff, um, which is there is room on this roster to move people around and 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 get more spots. So don't freak out about that. Yes, there are technically eight spots left available, but I wouldn't be surprised if the LA Galaxy bring 35 to 40 people into camp and then whittle that down. Um, even with the uh, you know the homegrown players and all the different things. I mean, there are seven homegrown players right now on the LA Galaxy roster. There will be eight on Friday. Uh, that's a huge deal, but not all of them are going to be on this senior roster in terms of holding a roster spot. So I don't want you to freak out. Um, about that. Uh, so that was, that's sort of my, my little bit of, of, Hey, calm down and, and be where you are. (laughs) But I mean, you know, look at, you have four goalkeepers on there. There's no way there's going to be four goalkeepers, Eric, um, for, you know, the rest of, of of this year, you're going to have two and you're going to probably send the other two down to galaxy two, and maybe they'll train up with them. But for the most part, they're going to spend down, um, in galaxy two land. So, I mean, does, does that make you feel a little bit less crazy, Eric? About all this? No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's, I, I'm of two minds. I, I see what you're saying. And in the first part of me wants to say, the league's probably not going to start beginning of March. January 28th, a week from now, they're probably not going into preseason. So there doesn't need to be a rush. Maybe, uh, you know, it's okay that they're holding off and not bringing in these players. But there's that other part of me that says, panic. What, why haven't we made moves? Why haven't we been making moves? since November and December or, you know, being hungry and going out and filling this roster with competent players, you know, pro level players, not just Academy players and young guns and, and backups, but like real deal, legit players. Uh, so that, that I, that, and still concerned that's still in the back of my mind, uh, that it just never, the project never finishes. Right. That, that, I'm a little bit worried about that, but with Vanny, maybe, maybe it's a two year project. Maybe this year it's a wash, but with Chicharito and Dos Santos and legit, I don't know that you can throw this season away. Hey, uh, all interesting. Here we go. Um, you know, this is this is sort of the, you know, you almost want to say it's a last stretch until they make some of these decisions, but it's not. Um, it, it seems like it's going to go out, just like you said. Um, so everybody just relax and calm down a little bit, and we'll see if perhaps the LA Galaxy can continue to fill out this roster. Because right now, uh, as was correct in the chat room, people are saying this feels more like 2017 than it does any other year. And you're right, because there aren't any game changers, playmakers um, yeah. there right now. And with that seven... Hurts. 
Yeah, with <laughs> seven to eight homegrown players currently on the roster. I mean, you're sitting there going, okay, that's a lot of homegrown players that aren't, you're putting guys on the roster who aren't going to get any minutes right now. Um, and and I think that's known. So I think that, you know, Dennis Closa, I think that Greg Vanny understand where they're going. Uh, you know, trust the process, Eric. That's what I'm going to say. Trust the process. Oh, no. <laughs> no? Don't say no, that. No, we're not. We're not doing that right now. Okay. Trust the process has been canceled. All right. That's if if you say so. All right. Uh, anything else you want to get to, or can we can we wrap this up? Well, just one shout out. It yep. is January twenty first, one twenty one. Big out to big shout out to Angel City Brigade, who sit in Section twenty one and keep the atmosphere in Victoria Block going, and and are a big part of the LA Galaxy community. So big shout out to ACB on 121. Yes, they sit in section 121. You said 21. So I just 121. That's one, why. Yeah, the one cut out. Yeah, maybe. The mic cut yeah, blame, I said cut, one. blame blame technology. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. All right. Uh all right, Eric, why don't you tell people where they can find you and uh, we'll get on out of here. All right. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at HammerEV. You could also follow me on Instagram at the Professional Foul. That's at Galaxy Profile. That's Galaxy P R O F O U L. And then Liga G Season 3 kicks off this Sunday. Follow at Liga, G, Liga underscore G96 on Twitter for updates or visit the Liga G page on cornerofthegalaxy.com. All right, very good. And if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Gessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where you can find all of our uh, podcasts, all of our articles, all of our coverage. We have the trackers, the rumor tracker, the roster tracker, the transaction tracker, all that stuff is up and you can find that. All right, uh, I think that about does it for us tonight. Uh, for uh, Eric, the Portuguese Hammer, I'm Josh Pato Gessman. You've been listening and watching to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.